Welcome back. On today's video, we're going to talk about piston designs, shim stacks, and the graphs that these pistons or the, the flow of these pistons, the design these pistons create uh, on a dyno. So stay tuned. Very interesting. Uh, the piston is the heart of the shock. So we'll cover more when we get back. Piston designs. This is where it gets a lot trickier. This is the heart of the shock. Um, before we get started on this, like, subscribe, comment. This will be a this will be a good video for comments. This will be a good video for questions. I challenge you guys to ask questions because this one's going to um, should generate questions. So please ask questions. Piston designs. Piston design determines the type of graph the shock will have. It will also determine how it works, okay? Some piston designs are better for dirt, some are better for asphalt. So piston design dictates the amount of flow that's gonna go through that piston, the amount of resistance that shim stack's gonna have to create. So piston design is very important, whether it's multiple ports, two, uh, three, four, five port pistons, which is about as much as you can get. Uh, there's a lot of tricky stuff going on with different piston designs that are uh, sequential. Um, so the piston business is um, easier to make, but uh, harder to understand. A lot of development goes into a piston, um, a lot of knowledge of how the oil flows through the shock and how the shims resist that oil flow. So piston design. So when you have a shock build and you like it and you get a dyno sheet, those numbers will feel different to you when you get them from a different manufacturer because of the piston design. So piston design is very important um, and very tricky. So linear piston. There's multiple types, you know, today we're going to cover linear, digressive, bidirectional, and SRT. Linear piston. Linear piston, often used on asphalt, is generally designed with small ports and straight through uh, design. Each side of the piston is flat and would use a pyramid stack that would create a linear curve. Okay. A lot of times on a linear piston, the bleed system is drilled in the piston as a hole. Okay, that's been common through time. That's a different bleed system. So you have parallel and in series. Okay, um, when you drill the bleed in the piston, then you have effects from that bleed throughout the entire build of the curve, okay? <clears throat> on a linear piston, things that got us in trouble early on was the hole size, the amount of force or oil that's being forced through the hole created a higher pressure and it wasn't happy with bumps. Uh, and we had to learn a little bit about perfecting that. Now, there's different ways to do a linear piston. This particular graph as a is more of a low flow linear piston. So we are getting ready to do some testing with that to see where the balance is because many shocks are often uh, unbalanced uh, in their builds between pressure and uh, the amount of flow. So like in the previous video where we did the dyno charts, when you have a lot of gap out on the open and close, it's because it takes a lot of pressure to open the shock because you got it shimmed up pretty big because you got big ports. And then it closes re relatively quick, so it creates a little hysteresis out there. Okay, so piston designs what's doing that. So this is a linear piston, small port. It's also a reduced flow where one side's a little more than the other, uh, but that's a linear piston. This is a linear graph, a linear design makes very flat lines, very straight. 
start at zero, run out, uh, very straight lines. Okay, there's a lot of people that are very, um, you know, very strict or very stern about what they believe about linear builds. A good friend of ours that does stuff in California, you know, he just, everything he does is more on a linear base and he's very vocal about it, you know, and he does road course cars, um, a lot of bikes. He's an authorized builder for another company and does a great job. And he is very much linear piston type guy, uh, linear design. So I, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong or, or with it. And from time to time, we'll be on a linear. We'll be back to a linear. A lot of guys like a linear on the right rear. That's a trend right now. Uh, linear degressive is a trend right now, which is not a piston we're covering in this segment. Okay. But it is one of the most popular pistons right now based on popularity, not based on performance. So it is a popular linear degressive, very popular. Everybody's on it, most everybody but us. Now, we do a different version of that. It's based on a high flow linear with a different shim stack configuration that creates a digressive build on one side and more of a linear build on the other side, but it's not a linear degressive. Okay, so that's linear chart. Digressive piston. Digressive pistons have been around for some time, and they take many shapes over the years. And one of the problems that we had early on was identifying a digressive versus progressive. Okay. Basically, the digressive has a preloaded stack and a lot of bleed in it on both sides, typically. So this caused the dyno curves to be at a little flat on the nose and then die off at high speed. This makes the digressive part of the piston. Companies that are very, very popular for um, digressive piston was Bilstein. Bilstein has some very good digressive pistons. Um, and they build very well, okay? And there's things you can do in the bleed circuit. Typically, this type of piston, and typically on a Bilstein, it was bleed through a shim, not through a hole. Um, doesn't always mean that that's the case, but this particular piston, that was the case. Uh, and you could do things with your bleed shims that cause different graphs, uh, or the low speed part of the graph to change. And that's, um, you know, it's very, very appealing for different people. Um, some builders will say it's not good to have two different rates in your shock, you know, a nose and a heel and a high speed. But in dirt and maybe an oval track in general, I really don't see how you can get away from it, you know. Um, Digressive piston build uh, builds a lot of bleed in the shock. Or a digressive build with a lot of bleed in the shock is how Bilstein shocks look in the past. This is very much a typical Bilstein looking shock uh, of the past. I'm not going to say this is what they're building today. Uh, not at all. They are utilizing different pistons and doing different things in their with their shocks. You know, uh, a digressive piston such as this is not really something that we're building, not at all. Um, we feel like that the car needs more car control in the low speed area, and we just don't do a digressive. We do a few linear digressive. It's not our main build. I feel like our main build in a high flow linear is much, much better. Uh, gives the car much, much better control, and uh, that's why we do what we do. So that's digressive piston, uh, bidirectional. A digressive piston can be bidirectional. A bidirectional means that the intake fluid on this side is coming from outside the piston and going to the inside of the piston, okay? And the oil that's coming up from the bottom side is doing the same thing, kind of a crossover. And those oils are not sharing the port, so they're not sharing a bleed system. So a bidirectional piston 
can allow you to separate your compression and your rebound to um, you know control. A lot of companies try to use a check to control the separation. And in that process, it becomes difficult, okay? It just becomes difficult. Um, but a bidirectional piston is semi-popular. It's not the most popular, uh, but that's what it's doing. It's control and flow from outside to inside. It crosses over. The compression side uses a different flow circuit than the rebound side, and the bleed shim is accordingly. So bidirectional. Uh, we do build a bidirectional plate that goes on our piston that creates this, that you could create a linear digressive build on or a di very digressive build both sides. Um, so we do that. You can build a lot of nose on it. You can build a lot of high speed. Um, and it creates, takes a linear piston, creates a bidirectional uh, flow in the oil. So that's a bi-directional plate that we sell that you can get for a linear piston. A SRT piston. SRT piston is a design that we have had for our left rears, okay? And we utilized it on sport mods when they were off the spring on the rod. So it was very, very uh, hard on the tires, very abrupt on the car when the car got in the rough. It was not pleasant for either the driver or traction. So we developed an SRT, which is slick, rough track piston, okay? There are other designs or other fundamental ways that companies are doing this. Uh, I just know what we're doing works very well for us and the way we're doing it. And we've had great success on it in both the rough and the slick smooth. So we didn't uh, we didn't understand that at first because it works so well in the rough. But for as good as it works in the rough, it works equally as well in the slick. And in the slick, it's easy to knock traction off the tire because it's so minimal. So it's very easy to do. So. The SRT does work good, probably should be the primary piston in every shock we build, but it's not. The idea of the SRT piston is to allow the car to travel through holes without upsetting the sidewall of the tire. Um, by doing this, we have maintained more traction on the tire and smoother, slicker, and the tracks is easy to, when it's easy to break traction on. In combination with a base valve, you can have the best shock to maintain traction there is. So we do a base valve. A base valve is a piston also. It's not a main piston. It's a uh, secondary piston that's in the top of the shock body that functions on the compression stroke. So that's, that's what that is. So SRT piston is kind of BSB um, oriented. Like I said, other companies do other things, but this is what we do. The heart of the piston is what's going to determine how your shock performs, okay, how your stack performs. We are going to do some videos on stack configuration. Um, not 100% sure if it's going into our build archives or our team page or our YouTube page. Don't know yet. But stack configuration is very important, okay? And and it's important for the type of racing that you do. So um, ask your builders these questions. I hope this knowledge helps you to go to your guys with more you know, knowledge, more confidence to ask questions. And don't just accept them answers. 